Okay, the saga continues. Just pulled the air box off, and the rats made really nice work of this. Like a flashlight. <clears throat> As you can see in there, they had a nice good stay in there. Um, and here is the air box, which is completely loaded too. These engines don't have air filters, because the idea is is that they run on the water and that you're not dealing with any grass and dirt and stuff like that. Well, they, they didn't plan for these things to be sitting 30 years in a garage. So, this is why you should keep the choke on uh, when you're storing your engines so the mice can't get in the carb. Um, because um, the throttle is stuck because there's so much stuff in there. And same with the choke, too. So, this is going to be a fun one. Mm, but, um, whole front comes right off. Not that bad. Uh, these screws here. Some on the other side. Um, and then there are on the air box that hold it and then that, that screw up there and then there's another one on the other side of the air box here right there so all comes apart fine as long as you don't have animals living in this um we did confirm that the electric starter works um and hooked up the battery to it and uh turned it over really good it's sparking real good at the plugs here, but we're still going to have to do the wires. And uh, the engine does have pretty good compression. I am just hoping that we didn't suck a whole bunch of junk into the engine while we're turning it over. That would be a big issue there. And uh, right here we can get a good look at that switch. So you can see here. You turn it to the stop position, the arm comes along and shorts it out. So that's your stop switch. Um, and that's what we were having issues with, where this was at the stop when we were trying to test for spark. Um, this is a Tillotson carburetor. What in... Oh, lighting's kind of bad here. But, uh, I don't know, it might be some of... What's in what? This is hard with the starter filament right there. Um, this is Tillotson OM4A. So I believe, uh, yeah, this is the same carburetor that is on that Elgin 35 there. And the carburetor on this one I didn't even touch. Just. Uh, Got some spark on it, tried it in the barrel and fired up, like second pull. So, uh, this one's going to be a lot different, obviously. Um, some weird things I noticed from working on that one is that there is an extra, extra plunger back here that, that pushes down on a little peg right there when you dump the throttle, you know. So I don't know if that, that pumps extra fuel into the barrel or what. But, um, I mean, I first noticed it on that Elgin there. So, um, I don't know if this one has a drain on it. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have a drain. Because, um, on the 35 here, there's a door on the front, and you flip that down, and there's a, there's a little button there that you press, and it drains the fuel right into the water, you know, because there was no EPA back in the day. But, um, you know, that didn't, that allowed the fuel to get out of the carburetor, so it didn't gum it up. 
Um, this one doesn't have it, and I think a lot of the Scott Atwater ones have a little screw on the bottom that you pull out and it'll drain it out. Um, I don't know if I'm going to tackle this tonight or uh, wait until tomorrow or just vacuum it out right now. And this is going to be a fun one too. I hope there's no dead animals in there. So actually, also, this white stuff on here, it, it should be this color. Someone actually painted over this. White, probably in the 60s or 70s or something like that. Um, because that's when everybody else went to all white for a while. And that was kind of the trend and then they didn't want the vibrant colors of the 50s. So that's where we stand on this one right here. Um, but Powerhead itself is in good condition just as long as you didn't suck too much of that in there. Uh, so I'm going to start vacuuming this out. <laughs> 